Happy Tuesday, and if it's Tuesday, that means on my channel, you're getting What Did Kurt Learn This Week, or an unboxing, or a demo. And this Tuesday, it's going to be the continuation of last week's demo for a brand new game called Sabertooth Baseball. Sabertooth Baseball uh, is, is uh, the first demo of it. Uh, featured a game between the 1935 Chicago Cubs and the 1927 New York Yankees. Did about three innings of that game and tried to show the rules. Today, we're going to take a step back and I'm going to show you in more detail how the game works. And then in the next two weeks, next week and the week after, next Tuesday and the Tuesday after that, we're going to do a couple of games for you using the Sabretooth uh, game engine. So, let's get to uh, a look at the different elements of Sabretooth Baseball so you feel like you've got an understanding of how the game works. And then next Tuesday, we'll put it all into practice. Here we go. Thank you for joining me. One of the things you get with Sabretooth Baseball that I appreciate is a very, very well-written uh, explanation of how the game works. So, the first thing you're told about is what you need to play. And that is three D10s and a D6. And once you have those, a pencil and some paper, you're ready to start. Uh, now this is what the batter's card looks like. And uh, this is turns out to be Mickey Cochran's card for the 1929 Philadelphia Athletics. There's a couple of sections here of the card that I want to draw your attention to. First, um, the type of hitter. So first you get the name, and then you get the team, and which way he bats. Okay, and then the type of hitter. Um, hitters in Sabretooth are labeled spray hitters or pull hitters, and that goes in the type section. That matters for... Uh, long hits, which are are seen in this uh, instructions as LG hits. Then you get power. So power um, uh, is a number from one to five. So five is maximum power, Babe Ruth type stuff. And one would be along the lines of like Brett Butler, or in this case, Mickey Cochran. Um, so the power number is going to affect how far the long hits are going to go. And that tells you kind of what you need to know about uh, distance for those hits. So that's what the power, the significance of the power number. So we've learned three things so far. Which way do they bat? Is he a spray hitter or a pull hitter? And how hard, how far does he typically hit the ball? The next one is plat right here, and that's the platoon number. Now, the platoon number for Sabretooth ranges from zero, which means that you don't really have a platoon differential, to three which would be a severe platoon differential uh, against the same-handed pitcher, whether that's lefty-lefty or righty-righty. Okay, and then that data is figured out over a series of seasons, so you're not just getting one year of data to come to that conclusion. On the batter card, there's a number of things that you may not see on a lot of other cards, and that is uh, this section, for one. Uh, this is a section for infield hits and the direction that they go. So, 1B3 is an infield hit to the first baseman. 1B4, infield hit to the second baseman. 1B5, infield hit to the third baseman. And 1B6 to the shortstop. Okay, those are your infield hits. Not every game has those, and so that's uh, one thing I wanted to draw to your attention. All right, LG is a long hit, and so if 
you roll in this area, and again, uh, rolling one to 500 is the hitter's card. One to 500 for your three D10s plus your one D6. One to 500 puts you on the hitter's card, so uh, if you roll an LG for Mickey Cochran, 480 to 500 is the roll. Uh, it's a possible home run. It's a possible extra base hit. It's a possible fly out. Then you consult the LG chart and um, the pitcher's home run adjustment would also be included. We'll get to that in a little while. Run is a scale from one being slow to seven being the fastest you can be. Um, stolen base grades, the first number here represents his ability to get a jump to steal. And the second number is how good is his chance to steal once he gets the jump. Bunt is A through F. A is the best buncher you can be. F is terrible. And stamina is the offensive stamina of a batter. So this number shows you the number of plate appearances that a batter can make in one week. And if you're doing a, a, a simulation, a solitaire simulation, maybe you're going Monday through Sunday in the schedule. If the batter appears more than a game other than as a pinch hitter, more than this number of plate appearances, he will bat in a fatigued role. Okay. Or fatigued rate. Here's the fielding ratings. So one is the worst. So here we go with range. This is an error rating. Uh, this is your arm rating. And for Mickey Cochran, because he's a catcher, he has a pass ball number here. Of course, not every player would have that. So range is two. Uh, one is the worst. Six is an all-time fielder at that position. Uh, for error number, one is the best and nine is the worst. And then the arm rating can be anywhere from negative 20 to positive 20. And this would be used again in the case of Cochran on stolen base attempts. So this is what a batter's card looks like for Sabertooth Baseball. Now let's look at a pitcher's card. This one, same team, Lefty Grove, 1929 Athletics. So, tells you the name, tells you the team, and then it goes through and shows you which way they throw. And then the ST number. This is the stamina and frequency per start for the pitcher. So this is his stamina, 34, and the frequency per uh, the frequency of the number of starts he can take is four. So what this means is he can start every fourth day for the entire season. All right. So, uh, and there's, there's different numbers that you can get for this, but for Grove, this is what this one means. Now under RL... The stamina and frequency per relief appearance for the pitcher. This is his stamina for each relief appearance. And this is how many relief appearances he can make per week. So if he goes in, um, this is the number of batters he can face. I didn't say that before about this. This is 34 batters faced in a starting role. He can do six in a relief role, and he can do that one time per week. Then we get to platoon grade that just like the batter's platoon grade, zero means didn't matter to lefty Grove. If either is righty or lefty, there wasn't much difference. Um, and this goes 
zero, one, or two. The batter and pitcher platoon numbers are added together into one platoon number. And the higher the number, the more likely the chances the pitcher will have the advantage when facing a batter of the same handedness. Uh, kind of a lefty specialist kind of a thing uh, for that particular pitcher. All right, so um, we're going to do a, a sample at bat here. Um, if Grove is pitching to Cochran and we roll a 426, what you're going to see is that that goes to the batter card. As you can see, 1 to 500 is batters. And then um, 501 to 1,000 is pitchers. 501 to 1,000 is the pitcher card numbers. So for Cochran, if we roll a 426, it's a single to right field, 1B9. On the other hand, if we did Grove and we got lefty's number of, say, 537, that would be in Lefty Grove's strikeout range and Cochran would strike out. All right, so that's uh, a start on how the cards work. If you have a basic understanding of that, you have a basic understanding of saber-tooth baseball. But there's more. Uh, one thing is that you will find a triple X chart. And a triple X chart is a rare play chart. So that is a possibility. Uh, there is also every, every uh, team has a ballpark chart. This is what the Ebbets Field ballpark chart looks like for the 1953 Dodgers that are part of the initial set. Um, so if you get a ballpark roll, and I'll talk about how you do that in a minute, but if you get a ballpark roll in each field, certain things could change. So for this, a ground out turns into a single on a roll of one to six. There's no way a single can turn into a ground out. A single can turn into a fly out, 7 to 18. A pop out or fly out to the first baseman, 19 to 29. She turns into a single, sorry, 19 to 29. Turns into a foul out, 30 to 46. And a single or double turns into a foul out, 47 to 53. Um, so every... Um, Every field has a column or a row like this one. All right, and then every field has a particular impact on its long hit chart. So obviously if you have a field like Ebbets Field, the ball's gonna fly out of there more easily and the rolls will allow for that to happen when the Dodgers are the home team. All right. Now, uh, the first thing that you do when you're getting ready to play uh, Sabretooth is to consult your weather effects. Weather can vary, of course, depending upon the park and the part of the country that you're in and all of that. So, um, before you even fill out a lineup card, the manager should know what the weather is going to be for that particular day. So you look at the month, the rain number is going to tell you if, uh, what the chance is that there will be rain on that particular day. The same thing for wind, uh, the same thing for temperature here, and whether that's going to impact uh, the day game or the night game will impact the flight of the ball for LG hits. This chart tells you which way the wind will blow the ball in that in which direction um, 
for that park at that velocity. So all of that impacts uh, LG hits. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all there is to say about that. All right, so, um, one thing that's unique about, uh, Sabretooth is the run rating. And this is something that I didn't do as good a job with as I should have done last week. The run rating in Sabretooth is when you want to take an extra base on hits or tag up or non-force out base advances. You're rolling one 10 sided die and if that number is between one and the run rating, the runner is safe. If the, higher, the, if the number is higher than the run rating, the runner is out Arm ratings of the fielders alter the run number. If there are two outs, all runners get plus one. So let's see how this works in practice. This example is one I like here. If the batter's run rating is two and he is on third base and a fly ball is hit to center field for the out. There are less than two outs, and the runner advancement chart in indicates the base runner can tag at and run. The center fielder has an arm rating of plus two. The runner on third can score on a roll of one to four. Now, I was real reluctant, and this is something that I have to get used to with Sabretooth. I was real reluctant to send the runners because I know outs on the bases are bad things, but I should have demonstrated that. And next week uh, in our game that we will demo, I'm gonna be running runners left and right. Okay. Next is stealing bases. Each player can get two numbers on his stolen base rating. First number represents the ability to get a good jump. The second number represents the percentage ability, as percentage chance of stealing the base on a good jump. Okay, so if he tries to get the jump, he's got to go. All right, so let's try this with uh, Grove and Cochran. Uh, and just, well, let's look at the example here. It says the runner on first base has an SP rating of 35 to 74. Now, where is that coming from? You're asking yourself. Well, that's a good question. So let's look at Cochran. 1462. 14 is his ability to get the jump. 62 is what happens when he tries, when he gets the jump and he's trying to make the steal. Well, let's suppose instead of 14 and 62, we had 35 and 74. This means the SB jump number is one to 35. So you're rolling, now the pitcher has a minus five hold rating. <coughs> so that lowers his stolen base jump number to one to 30. Catcher has a plus five arm rating, so that raises stolen base percentage, <coughs> excuse me, to one to 79 if the runner gets, <coughs> excuse me, gets a, if the runner gets a good jump. So, if the runner does not get a good jump, his stolen base percentage drops by 20 to one to 59. <clears throat> so, let's suppose we're looking at Cochran and Grove for our stolen base opportunity. All right, so suppose that Grove is on the mound. Now, Grove's hold number is a minus 10. It's found in the lower right corner of his card. Cochran's stolen base number is 
14, so we subtract 10, so the only way Mickey can get his jump is if he rolls uh, zero to, f I'm sorry, that's not true. If he rolls uh, one to four, so he's a 4% chance of getting the jump. Once he does, then you take the catcher's number and add or subtract it to the stolen base number right there. All right, so for example, if Cochran was on base and Cochran was catching, plus eight would drive that to a 70, if he did get the jump. But obviously Lefty Grove was a tough man to get the jump on, and so that didn't happen, or that wouldn't happen easily. All right, uh, a couple other things, and then uh, that will, there's just a couple other things I wanna highlight, and then that will do it for uh, today's demo, and then next week, of course, we'll put that into practice. We're going to have the uh, 1920 Chicago White Sox take on the 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers. All right, so. The next item is pitcher fatigue. When a starting or relief pitcher, like let's take Lefty Grove, reaches their stamina number in batter's faced, 34 if he's starting, six if he's brought in in relief, then after that, if two more batters reach base in any matter other than a fielder's choice or an intentional walk, the pitcher becomes fatigued. So when that happens, here are the changes. On any strikeout, roll 1d6. If it's 1 to 2, it turns into a walk. On any ground out, you roll a 1d6. If it's 1 to 2, it's a single. On any fly out, you roll 1d6. If it's 1 to 2, it becomes a double. And on any LG, you're adding 30 feet to the distance traveled by the hit. So those are pretty serious uh, adjustments. Uh, but you can also see that you got a one-third chance of those things happening. So it's not automatic that the fatigue number will bite you, but it's there's a good chance. Um, two other things. One and I'm gonna demonstrate the hit and run and stealing bases in the demo next week. But there is a, a an item called catcher fatigue. Catchers immediately go to fatigue mode for the next game if any of these conditions occur in the previous calendar day. He can pinch it and play one inning behind the, the plate and still be rested for the following day. If he catches nine innings with 90 or plus, 90 plus degrees, or 12 or more innings, or when he catches nine or more innings of a night game, follow the next day by a day game, he is fatigued. All right. Conversely, when a position player does not bat in a game for 15 consecutive calendar days, he is rusty. And for that, then a D6 turns singles into flyouts. Okay. Uh, okay. And I think that covers the basics that I did not discuss last week in the demo. So next week, we'll put it all into practice with Sabertooth Baseball. These are your cards. I'm gonna put the link below this video for you to check out the website in case you'd like to see more about it. Thank you for joining me. Please join me for next week's demo and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to share the video with others that may want to know what Sabretooth Baseball is all about.
brand new game on the market. Thanks again for joining me. Hope you have a good day. So long, everybody.